Welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry, and today we're going to talk about leaders and enders and how they help with accuracy. Not really my tips or anything, but stuff that I've just learned over the years that has been helpful to me, and I'm hoping that it will be helpful for you. So let me just adjust my camera so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So basically what we're looking at is how we deal with our thread. Now with older machines, you always had to hold your thread down with your finger to the side so that it didn't get sucked up through the needle and disappear and then you had to re-thread your machine, which is irritating. With the newer modern machines, you don't really have to worry about that. I call them step and go machines. It's just my own weird terminology. But if I don't hold my thread, what happens is, is when I sew, it's going to leave this bunch. Let me see if I can get this in the camera so that you're able to see it. Ooh, there we are. And see how it's all bunched up behind so if that happens, then I have to take like a thread, a, a needle, and I have to pull it apart. And it still somewhat leaves a little bit of a knot up in here, which we don't want when we're quilting. Every bit of thread that goes into our seam takes away from getting a perfect quarter inch seam. You learn a little bit more of that on our Seaside uh, Quilting Supplies on YouTube, I did a video for the scant quarter inch because everything that comes between uh, takes away from our, our fabric, our thread, what size thread you're using. I use a 50 weight when I am uh, piecing. So it's a light, you know, it's a little bit of a lighter thread and it makes it a little simpler um, to not take so much away. And then when you fold your fabric open and you press it, uh, that fabric itself takes away a little bit from your seam because you have that fabric there. Like I said, I explained this a lot more in the uh, scant quarter inch tutorial, which I posted the other day in our Seaside Quilting uh, group on Facebook so take a look at that and you'll learn a little bit more if you're not familiar with the scant quarter inch I really highly recommend that you sew some pieces together test them and see if you're getting a true quarter inch or not if you're not getting a true quarter inch with your with your machine set just normally and using a quarter inch foot you can adjust your needle so that it goes to 2.8 and that will be your scant quarter inch. The other thing that I recommend when piecing is I lower the stitch width to 2.0. It gives you a little more stitches in, in your seam. I find that if your stitches are close together, my pieces don't uh, just stay neater and a little bit better. Anyways, what we're talking about today, like I said, is chain piecing and leaders and enders. Basically, my leaders are just scraps, just junk pieces that usually get cut off and either thrown into a junk bin that I use for stuffing or they get thrown away, whatever, however your solution is. And I use these when I go to chain piece. Now, chain piecing is just taking identical pieces that you're going to be sewing to make a block and continually sewing those. So let's take a look at that. First, because I don't wanna to have to remember to hold my thread every single time and cut between my pieces, I want to go a little bit faster. So I'm just going to put my leader piece in and I sew till I get just about to the end, and I leave that piece under my needle. Now when I 
go to sew my next pieces. These are pieces that I'm piecing together uh, for a scrap quilt. I'm going to let my thread go about two, three stitches past that leader. And then I just put my next piece under here and I'm going to stitch it. And I will leave that about two, three stitch spaces before my needle comes off of that piece. And I'm just gonna leave it there until I have my next two pieces ready to be sewn. Once I'm ready to sew this, I will hold that piece in place and I will go that two, three stitches. I'm actually gonna turn my machine down because I'm being Speedy Gonzalez here. Um, just two, three stitches away from that piece. So you have just a little tiny separation between your pieces for when you go to clip. Then I will put my next two pieces in and I will let them touch my needle, not shoved against it so that it bumps up, just so it's just there touching my needle. And I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna sew this one. Then once again, I'm gonna take my next two pieces. And these are just scraps, so I'm not even really caring how they go together. Eventually, I'm going to sew them together. So once again, I'm gonna go past, two, three stitches past that piece, and I'm going to put my next piece in. This is what you call chain piecing. So if you have a lot of you know pieces that are all the same and you've got to piece those for say eight blocks or whatever I will continually sew all of those pieces together now once I'm done I will take what 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 we call an ender piece and I will put this through so I'll get that just a little bit past. And then I will put my ender piece in. Now my ender piece just stays there while I clip my piece off. And if you have one of these handy dandy uh, blade sabers, this is just one of those that you put your an old rotary cutter blade into. Uh, Seaside Quilting Supplies uh, sells these. I just take my pieces and bam, just snap them through. And I just set, set my leader piece aside, which will become an ender piece later. Now I have three sections and later on I will open these up and press them And then later, these can become leader pieces when I go to sew these together or ender pieces, however. So literally, while you are sewing one quilt, if you have a large amount of scraps that are all pre-cut for a scrap quilt, you could literally use your enders and leaders to make a quilt. So what does that mean? because I've seen this posted and then people get confused and they're like, well, what do you mean by that? Because who would want to use these leaders and unders to make a quilt? How would you make a quilt out of those? You wouldn't. So let me show you how this would work. So say I'm chain piecing. This will be my first leader because it's just a junk piece. Now, say I've already chained, we're just going to imagine that I have a bunch of chain pieces on here. I'll put a couple on. Same thing, I'm just gonna go a little bit past my leader piece. I never worry about what my first leader piece looks like. It can be a triangle, it can be a one inch strip. People get technical about it and they're like, oh, I use a one inch strip, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to worry about what my scrap piece looks like because this isn't never going to matter. It's just going to go into a junk pile. So I'll put my first piece in and we'll just pretend this is the actual quilt that I'm making. 
And say I have a few pieces that are chain pieced together and now I'm done with those pieces and I want to end off so that I can clip those. So I keep a stack of, right now I'm going to be using uh, two and a half inch squares. I'm not actually using these for a quilt, at, a secondary quilt at the moment, but if I was, this would be great to have to the side. I'm going to start using some of these in um, when I'm doing borders. I want to do some creative borders, so I'm going to use some of these in borders, and I'll show that at a later time when I get a little more sewn up. So for right now, I'm using these scraps as my leaders and enders, and then I'm going to set them aside until I have enough of them to open up and press and then put them together. So see, I'm all done doing my chain piecing. Now I'm going to end off and I need to put an ender in there. This ender piece is going to stay in place until I start my next chain piecing section for the quilt that I'm working on. And then I will chain piece a few, then I will put another ender piece in. When I do my, my next ender piece, again, it's going to be one of these that I'm sewing for a secondary quilt or for part of a, a border, whatever it is. That will stay under my needle. Now say I'm done for the day, I'm not gonna do any more chain piecing. I'm gonna leave that there. When I start my machine back up, I will just hit, I will make sure that it's sitting in place. I'll hit my needle down and that ender piece will be there and it becomes my leader piece. So I always have a piece, unless I'm sewing garments, but I always have this piece sitting there for quilting, which is always my leader piece. And then like I said, later on, I'll be able to open these up I'll be able to press them. And then I will put these together. And when I put these together, once I have them, you know, matching, I will put these through as my leaders and enders until I have a stack of these. So anyways, that's just a little bit of a tip. The reason why it helps with accuracy is to keep that bunching up from happening underneath any of our pieces, which gives us our true quarter inch seam allowance that we need. Like I said, go back and check out the scant quarter inch tutorial. That'll give you a little more information about the scant quarter inch. I hate to try to put too much into each video uh, so I can kind of keep them as short as possible. So anyways, this has been Seaside Quilting Tutorials. I'm Terry. I wish you a happy sewing day. Thank you.